And at number 10, we have the gulper eel. As you might imagine, this scary looking eel has an extremely large mouth that they use to swallow their prey whole. If that's not terrifying enough, the gulper eel is so adapted to eating large objects that its mouth and stomach can even expand further to accommodate food. There's actually not a lot known about this creature because, well, they live 3,000 meters below the surface, but from my own observations, I'm not a scientist or anything, but I can tell that I never want to come face to face with these guys. Apparently they can grow up to six feet long, which is not okay. And they have extremely long tails that they use like a whip in order to move through the water fast. Sangletooth comes onto this list at number nine. Take a look at this nasty underbite. Quick, someone call the orthodontist because this thing needs to be fixed ASAP. Well, as it turns out, the snaggletooth fish uses his underbite to his advantage in order to kill his prey. These creepy fish can grow up to two feet long and they live in the deepest parts of the ocean. So scientists are still trying to discover more information about them. All we know for certain is they have sharp hooked teeth and they use this to snag their prey. Evolution really helped them out because in the deep sea, food is pretty scarce so you need every advantage that you can get. And you know what, note to self, stay away from the deep sea. And now at number eight, we're talking about the viper fish. These nightmarish fish live at depths of up to 2,800 meters and they are mainly found in tropical waters. Thankfully, they are rarely seen by humans, so... So we're safe, safe for now. One of their organs lights up, which is so cool, which actually protects the viper fish from other predators that are moving below them. The light also helps to attract prey and they use it to communicate with mates and rivals. Now let's talk about their teeth. Their teeth are unusually large and when it hunts in the dark, their large teeth help to grab and hold onto their prey so they have no chance of escaping. And when they catch a larger prey, they can swallow them by rotating their skull. The viper fish is one of the most fiercest predators in the deep sea. And the scary part of them is once they bite into you, it will be too late and there's nothing that you can do. Making our way into number seven, we have the giant spider crab. I mean, no thanks to this. Normally, I wouldn't consider crabs as like, you know, something that is scary, but there's exceptions to everything. And there's an exception to this. This giant crab has super long legs and huge pincers. These guys are one of the largest crabs in the world. And lucky for us, they live at the bottom of the ocean. These crabs can weigh up to 44 pounds and they have a leg span of about 13 feet. I mean, we're talking about their leg. Is this real life right now? I'm officially scared for life. Nothing should be that big. Oh, and get this, they will eat just about anything, including corpses. And even though these crabs are massive, they're extremely good at camouflaging their enormous bodies. And now let's talk about the razor sharp claws. They're able to move pretty fast and they're able to kill other smaller animals with ease. Their claws are so strong and large enough to pry open muscles and clamps. So keeping that in mind, can you imagine what they can do to a human? Terrible Claw Lobster brings us to number six. This thing looks like they came straight out of a horror movie. The Terrible Claw Lobster has one really long, scary looking claw that kind of looks like a chainsaw, or maybe that's just me. This creature was discovered in 2010, so fairly recently, and it was found 250 meters below the surface in the waters in the Philippines. Am I the only one that's concerned that we've only discovered this thing nine years ago? What else is living in the water that we don't know about? Thankfully, these lobsters only grow up to three centimeters. So they're, they're fairly small, although they probably look big in pictures right now. So his long tooth claw might be the only thing terrifying about him. Even though this lobster is, you know, relatively tiny, I wouldn't want to be pinched by his razor sharp claw. I'm pretty sure he can amputate my big toe if he really wanted to. Number five, we have the sarcastic fringe head. And believe me, I'm not being sarcastic about his name. This terrifying creature can open its mouth insanely wide so that he can easily devour his prey. The sarcastic fringe head fish lives off of the Pacific coast of North America and they are extremely temperamental.
They are fierce territorial creatures that will aggressively protect their homes. Whenever they sense danger, they will open up their enormous mouths and show their needle-like teeth in order to defend themselves. At first, they will give you a warning by flexing and snapping their jaw, but if their enemy ignores the warning, they won't hesitate to use their ferocious teeth to attack. Chimera takes us to number four, also known as ghost sharks, ratfish, or spookfish. This strange looking creature with the really strange names, well they live deep in the oceans and scientists believe that they are some of the oldest fish to have ever lived. I mean take a look at this picture right here, they have huge dark eyes, they look like they are staring directly into my soul and your guys' soul right now. They kind of look like a robot or mechanical. Most chimeras live deep in the water which makes them very hard to study, but what we do know is is that they have three pairs of tooth plates that protrude from the mouth like a rat. Oh, and their teeth are extremely effective at grinding shells so they can easily eat their prey. Let's just say that I'm happy that chimeras aren't interested in humans, but I guess they can evolve and things can change. And yeah, I'm like, I'm like nervous laughing right now. Number three, we're talking about the tongue-eating louse. This thing is actually super disgusting. Well, let me explain what this gross monster does. First, this creature will enter a fish through its gills. Then it will change sex while living in a parasite within the fish. And then it will attach itself to the fish's tongue. It sucks out all of the blood on the fish's tongue until the tongue just falls off. I don't even know what to do with that information. That is absolutely terrifying and now I'm gonna have nightmares about these gross little creatures crawling in through my nose and like sucking the blood off of my tongue and I'm probably gonna have nightmares about my tongue falling off. Someone in Belfast bought a fish from a supermarket and when she went to prepare dinner she noticed a large parasite in its mouth. I'm pretty sure I'd never eat another fish in my lifetime if I saw this in person. The woman actually took the fish back to the store to get a refund. And before you start jumping, you know, to conclusions here, the tongue-eating louse doesn't pose a risk to humans, but I'd still be pretty traumatized if this happened to me. Northern Stargazer takes the number two spot. If you're planning on a scuba diving vacation, you might want to consider getting your money back. On this list, we've seen a lot of hideous and scary looking fish, and the Northern Stargazer is no exception to that. Judging by the name, this fish sounds pretty docile and friendly, right? Well, think again. You guys know what you guys clicked on. This dead looking fish buries itself into the ocean floor, and it will jolt out at its prey while opening up its giant mouth in order to swallow his prey whole. Well, let's watch this guy in action. That fish never even stood a chance. This is actually pretty barbaric. I'm never going underwater ever again. My scuba diving vacation is canceled. Actually, I don't even have a scuba diving vacation planned. I work too much. And now, coming in at number one, we have the Goblin Shark. The Goblin Shark, I mean, what the heck is this? This is one of the oldest sharks ever, and it's often referred to as the living fossil because of it. A lot of this shark's lifestyle is completely, you know, a mystery to scientists. The largest goblin shark on record was 12.6 feet long, and it weighed in at 463 pounds. But it's possible that goblin sharks can grow much bigger than that. One of its most distinctive features is its long, flattened snout and nobody knows exactly what it's used for. But one of the most terrifying things about this shark is how they hunt. Their jaws are attached to elastic ligaments so when a prey comes close enough they can protrude their jaw which allows the shark to catapult its whole mouth forward at a distance of 8-9% to of its total body weight. If humans were able to do this, we would be able to bite into a piece of food that is seven inches away. Like, just, just imagine that. Actually, it'd be pretty horrifying. 
Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Mysterious Mass. When a mysterious mass washed up on shore in Indonesia, people had a lot of questions. At first, it was rumored to be the corpse of an enormous squid, which to be fair, really would be quite the sight. Locals were flocking to the area to get a glimpse at this washed up creature, which is said to have been the size of a shipping container. After more examination was done by experts, they got to the bottom of what this creature really was, and it was no squid. No, instead, this creature was actually a whale, a sperm whale to be more specific. Indonesia's Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries explained why this creature looked so far from itself when they explained the gruesome decomposition process. They said, quote, With sperm whales, when they decay, the intestines will come out through the bottom of the throat, which is striped like a pumpkin, and they become curved. So. That's gross, but at least it gives us answers to this long time mystery. In our number nine spot today, we have Double Trouble. Over in the Netherlands, this is a discovery that when it occurred, it shocked all of those who were there to see it. Two fishermen were the ones that stumbled upon this, and at first they thought they were seeing double. That is because what they found was actually a two-headed porpoise. Of course, further research was done on this animal because the fishermen knew it was rare, but I don't think they knew just how rare it really was. Experts would go on to later confirm that this was the first case of conjoined twin porpoises ever discovered. In fact, it's so shocking that this happened because it's only the tenth known within the group of sea mammals that they belong to, which is a group that includes whales and dolphins. It truly was quite a remarkable discovery, albeit probably a bit shocking when it first happened. In our number eight spot today, we have jellyfish. Back in 2017, there was a mega swarm of giant barrel jellyfish that ended up washed along the Welsh coastline. Like I'm talking about thousands of them. And these creatures can be quite large as well, growing to be about 35 inches in diameter. Many experts were shocked and had explained that they had never seen this many, especially this large before, so it was truly quite the sight to see. Experts explained that the unseasonably warm weather that was seen at the time likely boosted their numbers, and this may explain the mass quantity of them. In terms of how they ended up there, well, they were probably caught up while attempting to migrate. In our number seven spot today, we have the sea snake. Okay, so rather than after disaster, these creatures kept showing up before disaster, and it had many people thinking that perhaps they were some sort of omen, and I can totally understand why. In the Philippines, before devastating earthquakes would appear, there would be these 10-foot-long creatures being referred to as sea serpents that would be found washing up on the beaches. Listen, if I found a weird, huge sea snake a bunch of times before something bad happened, I would also 100% think that it had some sort of omen. It turns out that these were just ore fish, and no, they are not an omen, and no, they can't predict earthquakes or other natural disasters. In our number six spot today, we have isopods. Okay, so you know pill bugs or potato bugs or roly polies, whatever you want to call them? You know the gross little bugs? Well, what if I told you that there's a sea creature that looks like them? And then what if I told you that sometimes this sea version grows to be like the size of a puppy? Yeah, a little unnerving and very disgusting, right? These things are actually isopods, and while most don't grow to be that large, one of the largest on record was found washed up in Indonesia. It has been nicknamed Giant for obvious reasons, and was measured to be about 13 inches long. This discovery, while disgusting, also proved to be quite remarkable remarkable as it was the first giant isopod to be found in over a decade. In our number five spot today, we have the octopus anomaly. When this creature was found, it almost became someone's meal until its anomaly was realized. It was an octopus, but instead of eight arms, this one had nine. That's like a Novemo puss now. Of course, this led to the question, how does an octopus grow nine arms? Well, that has to do with their ability to regrow limbs. Like how lizards can regrow tails, octopuses have the ability to regenerate their own arms, but sometimes this process goes a little wonky. It's likely that this octopus at some point had to regrow their arm, and while that was happening, this new arm just sprouted another new one, thus the nine-armed octopus was born. Apparently, these sorts of things can happen over and over over again to just one octopus. According to a 1965 study, it is said that this once gave an octopus 90 different arms. So that's a lot. In our number four spot today, we have this unidentified creature. This creature was found on shore after the devastating 2011 tsunami that hit Japan. A survivor of this disaster was the one who found this strange creature, and while at first, from a bit of a distance, it appeared as though it could be like 
a small whale or something like that. From close up, it appeared more like a boulder or a large rock, leaving people completely baffled. In the end, especially because all of the work that experts needed to turn their focus to during this time, whatever was seen by this person wasn't fully looked into, so what it ended up being remains a bit of a mystery. There's a video of the entire ordeal so that you can get a little bit of a closer look. spot today we have the slick head. This is the discovery that actually ended up being the moment an entire new species was discovered. Found in Japan, researchers were thrilled when they saw this colossal sea monster and realized that despite the heavily fished area that it came from, no one had ever found this fish before. The fish belonged to a family of fish known as slick heads, which are known for their scale-free heads and gill covers. But unlike other much smaller members of its family, this new find was a beast. The previously known members of this family usually grew to be about 14 inches in length, but this one was a massive 55 inches long and 55 pounds heavy. Another thing about this fish that made it different from its other family members is that, while slick heads are usually known for eating plankton and weak swimmers such as jellyfish, this new huge guy had evidence that showed he hunted other fish and was actually quite the predator. Despite this guy and his massive terrifying look, it was definitely an exciting day for those getting to research this newfound fish. In our number two spot today, we have a long journey. After the devastating Japan tsunami that occurred in 2011, for years after the oceans saw repercussions. Of course, this was also a disaster that carried over to land. Many, many people died, many homes and businesses were destroyed. I'm not trying to minimize or disregard the impact this tsunami had on humans. This is just a list of creatures, so that's what we're focusing on today. So basically, years after the tsunami, a whole slew of strange creatures started washing up on the shores of the Pacific Northwest and California. Some of these new creatures were even clinging to plastic debris that had been swept out to sea in the disaster. These creatures would continue to arrive year after year. We're talking shellfish, crustaceans, marine worms, sea stars, sponges, and even fish. What was alarming is that they were alive, and while that is great, some of these species are invasive and can totally throw off an entire ecosystem. It truly has been quite a time for research to see how this happened and how it affects both the animals themselves and the new area that they've been washed ashore to. In our number one spot today, we have the sea monster. Back in March of 2012, the nightmarish sea monster washed up on South Carolina shores and had people completely confused and stunned. People had truly no idea what it was and the theories of course started swirling. Many people believed it was some sort of never before discovered sea monster and honestly I do not blame them. This thing looked weird, creepy, and I would have had no other guesses. It honestly looked like it could have been from Jurassic Park, but in the end, thankfully, there are many people out there who know much more than I do, and experts were able to take the wheel and get to the bottom of this mystery. In the end, a local veterinarian was able to determine that this washed up creature was in fact the corpse of a sturgeon that was covered in scut. The reason everyone thought it was a monster is because sturgeons are huge, growing to be 800 pounds and up to 15 feet in length. In our number 10 spot today, we have the anglerfish. In case you're thinking, thinking, hey, this fish looks familiar. Well, that's probably because this is the fish from Finding Nemo that almost ate Marlin and Dory after Dory sang her infamous ballad, Just Keep Swimming. Gosh, now that I've been reminded of it, you better believe that I'm gonna be singing it all night long. This aquatic fish can be found in some of the darkest spots of the ocean. The angler fish has an organ attached to the front of its head. Yes, that's right, an organ. This organ is called an S. The esca is able to emit light due to a special form of bacteria called bioluminescence. The esca organ is actually the reason that the anglerfish is able to live in the ocean about 3,300 feet, which is 583 feet more than the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. There is supposed to be over 200 species of the anglerfish. That's 200 too many if you ask me. Next up in our number nine spot today, we have the goblin shark, named because it looks just like the mythical creatures and perhaps just like the HP Gringotts bank employees, but in fish form. The goblin shark has been swimming in the deepest parts of the sea for over a hundred million years, most known to be found near Japan. The goblin shark has a long snout, which is a kind of antenna, which makes it capable of sensing the minute electric fields being sent out by prey nearby. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh up to
to 460 pounds. Wow. Their fang-like teeth allows them to snap up their prey and devour it. At this point, scientists don't know too much about their behavior. However, they have concluded that they live a pretty solitary life. Next up in our number eight spot, we have the harp sponge, also known as the Chondrocladia lyra. I have to say, this sea creature is actually so satisfying to look at for some reason. Anyone else get me? It literally looks like a harp, which makes it so hard to believe that it is a living creature. This sponge-like creature is actually known for its carnivorous appetite. It actually has Velcro-like hooks on the external part of its body, and they trap copepods and other small crustaceans. They then break down its prey until it's able to be absorbed through its pores. So it sucks you in with its Velcro-like body parts and proceeds to eat you. In our seventh spot today, we have the vampire squid. Yes, a real underwater vampire. Despite its name, the vampire squid is actually neither a squid nor an octopus. Scientists have separated it into its own group, even though it is quite similar with eight arms and two tentacles. The vampire squid can grow to around 12 inches in length. Its body varies from completely jet black to red. Its name comes from its dark color, and its skin kind of resembles a cape as its skin is connected to its arms. Fun fact, if one of its arms were to be removed by, say, a predator, then it can regenerate and grow back. That's pretty cool. Coming up in our sixth spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Okay, not going to lie, this fish looks like it's from another planet, let alone a parallel universe. It basically looks like it had a run in with the company that makes those glow in the dark bracelets. And my inner 90s baby is super happy to see this. Do kids these days still use glow in the dark bracelets? Please let me know in the comment section below. The barrel eye fish is a deep sea fish, also known as a spook fish, and it got its name because it has barrel shaped eyes with green lenses. They are known to have large fins and they're also known to have a transparent head that fills with fluid. Before 2009, scientists actually believed that they could only look up, but they have since observed that the fish can rotate its eyes forward when it's eating. That's pretty cool. The barrel eye fish is usually seen looking like it's lying down motionless. According to researchers, their transparent heads and green pigmented eyes help in filtering out the sunlight reaching their deep sea habitat. They have also been found to be in the North Pacific waters and near Baja, California and Japan. In our fifth spot today, we have the flapjack octopus. Gosh, why is it named this? Now I'm going to have to eat pancakes after this video. As delicious as its name sounds, its look instantly makes you say, better not. In fact, it looks more like a cute Pokemon, if anything, so I'm going to choose to believe that it's really a creature from my universe where Pokemon really exist and it somehow got into our universe through some underwater portal. The Flapjack Octopus is a part of the Umbrella Octopus family known for their umbrella-like appearance during any kind of movement. It lives between 500 to 1,500 meters below the sea. They are mostly found in the Eastern Pacific Ocean with some sightings in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. They don't have a long lifespan, usually living for 1.5 to 2.5 years. The flapjack octopus eats prawns, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, krill, crabs, to name a few. When it's ready to hunt, it flattens out its body in order to appear less threatening. The flapjack is another creature found in Finding Nemo, one of Nemo's, you know, class friends named Pearl. In our fourth spot today, we have the Dumbo octopus. As you can probably guess, its nickname came from the fact that its ears are as cute as the famous Disney character, Dumbo. The Dumbo octopus, like the flapjack, is another umbrella octopus, and it can live down to the depths of 13,100 feet, and some scientists speculate even deeper. They are inkless, unlike a lot of their cousins, and they move by slowly flapping their ears, and they use their arms to steer. Fun fact about female Dumbo octopuses, they can actually store sperm for long periods of time after mating with a male. This is to their advantage, of course, because they can then transfer sperm to the most developed eggs when it is the right time for reproducing. No comment, <laughs> but that sounds great. <laughs> they eat pelagic invertebrates that swim above the seafloor, and as such, 
they spend much of their lives suspended above the seafloor. In our third spot today, we have gulper eels. The gulper eel is quite terrifying to look at, and it is definitely the kind of fish that makes me slightly terrified to go swimming in the ocean. But I don't have to worry because they are in the deep sea. I only have to worry about, you know, sharks, stingrays, and stepping on a jellyfish. The gulper eel has a very distinctive trait. It has a very large mouth, and it tends to snap at its prey similar to a snake. Its large mouth and its ability to open wide allows it to eat creatures you would otherwise assume would be too big for it to eat. It has a very skinny body, long and snake-like. They are about two to three feet in length and they live in the deep, deep sea ranging from 1,600 to almost 10,000 feet below the surface. Known to be the fish of your nightmares and of course I don't disagree with this. In our second spot today we have the pelican flounder. This fish is actually found in the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. The pelican flounder makes itself as flat as possible to counter the pressure levels of the deep sea. Scientists haven't been able to observe this fish much in its natural habitat and so therefore nothing much is known. But we do know that the pelican larva, however, looks like it is from another dimension and it has a very alien-like sort of appearance. The larva are transparent and become brown as they grow into their adult form. They grow to be about 38 centimeters in length. Save the best till last. In our first spot today, we have the blobfish. Most people say that this is the ugliest fish in the world, but personally, I think the goblin shark is worse. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Which fish is uglier? The blobfish, the goblin shark, or let's throw in the angler fish too, because that's another gross one. The blobfish has been described to look like a half melted human reduced to nothing more than a bubble. That is the perfect description of it. It also kind of reminds me of slime, but living. This fish can be found living in the deep sea of the coast of Australia and New Zealand. It is said to be residing in about 2,000 and 3,900 feet deep. Apparently the only reason it looks like the way that it does is because of depressurization damage done while bringing the animal to the surface. It looks like a fairly normal fish though at the bottom of the ocean. The blobfish has an extremely long lifespan of 130 years. It weighs about 20 pounds and it's about 12 inches long. They have no teeth, no skeleton, and they don't spend much energy moving around. So basically their name is quite fitting. The mastodon tramples onto this list at number 10. Mastodons were famous for their long, curved, and dangerous looking tusks. They went extinct about 11,000 years ago, shortly after the last ice age. Their average body size was around 7 foot 7 inches for females, and large males measured in at about 9 feet 2 inches in height. They most likely went extinct from a combination of climate change, increased competition for food sources, and possibly hunting by early humans. Thankfully for us, they are plant eaters and showed no interest in eating humans. So don't worry, you'll still rest peaceful tonight knowing that if scientists do bring these animals back to life, we're gonna be okay. The woolly mammoth barges onto this list at number nine. These creatures were closely related to today's modern Asian elephants. Elephants have become my favorite animals. They're very intelligent beings. They were around four meters tall and weighed approximately six tons. Because we have a lot of mammoth corpses that are so well preserved, scientists have been able to extract their DNA. So in theory, we would be able to clone the woolly mammoth and bring them back from extinction. But you know what, I'm not sure how I would feel about this because they are absolutely massive. And what if we can't tame them? And now at number eight, we have the Tasmanian tiger. Before researching for this list, I had no idea that these things ever existed. I've heard of the Tasmanian devil, but not the Tasmanian tiger. These creatures predominantly hunted at night and their prey includes kangaroos, wallabies, small mammals, and birds. Hopefully we're not considered small mammals. Well, apparently they would chase after their prey over long distances, slowly tiring them out. And then without warning, they would sprint and grab their victims by the neck. They were able to open up their jaws to about 120 degree angle and sometimes they would even hop around on two legs. I mean, what a weird animal. They eventually died out in the 1930s, but that's not stopping scientists from one day bringing them back from the dead to live amongst us. Number seven, we have the Irish elk. This animal was one of the largest deer to ever walk on the earth. It's suspected that these animals roamed the earth about 7,700 years ago in Siberia 
and our current red deer or fallow deer might have some similar genes to the Irish elk. They stood at a height of about 7 feet tall and their massive antlers measured in at a whopping 12 feet long. I mean is this real life right now? Those humongous antlers probably did some serious damage back in the day. Well not really. Apparently their antlers weren't the best in battle. It was mainly used as a way to attract the ladies. In either case I think the Irish elk would give our current moose a run for their money. Unless it's a Canadian moose. Canadian mooses are extremely large. For those of you guys who are scared of birds, you might want to take cover because in at number 6 we have the moa. These guys were flightless birds that lived in New Zealand. They went extinct about 700 years ago, which is actually pretty recent if you think about it. But now scientists believe that they are getting very close to bringing these large birds back from the dead. The moa were extremely tall, they measured in at about 12 feet and weighed over a ton. I mean what the heck did these guys eat? I need to get on this moa diet when I'm ready to put on some serious muscle gains. They were also very swift runners, they were able to defend themselves by kicking whenever they got cornered. Thankfully they mainly ate seeds, fruits, leaves, and grass, so you know what? I'd gladly welcome these guys back if we managed to bring them back from extinction. But I know a few people who are scared of birds who would probably want to stop this from happening altogether. Caspian tigers crawl onto our list at number 5. These creatures used to be located in Turkey and Central Asia, but they went extinct in the 1960s, so not that long ago. They were known to be aggressive hunters that preyed on wild boar, red deer and domestic animals such as dogs and cattle. There are some scientists that want to bring back the Caspian tigers by reintroducing the nearly identical Siberian tiger to its old habitats where they are expecting it to adapt. Up next on our list, number 4, we're talking about the woolly rhinoceros. These huge beasts became extinct at the end of the most recent ice age. The woolly rhino was a massive animal. He had two large horns near the front of his skull and he was covered with a thick coat of hair that made it ideal for him to live in harsh climates. Humans are being blamed for their extinction so I guess scientists want to reintroduce them back into the environment you know to make up for it. But the real question is what kind of impact would reintroducing the woolly rhinoceros have on our animals living today? I'm not sure if it would be in anyone's best interest to bring them back from the dead. Because we bring them back from the dead, what animal species do they totally eliminate? And now at number 3 we have the Siberian Unicorn. I guess unicorns really did exist, I kid you not, except they didn't look like the typical white horse that you know we see in fairy tale books. So let's take a look at what this thing looks like. Here it is right here. The Siberian Unicorn lived up until 39,000 years ago. They were 1.9 meters tall about 4 meters long and weighed in more than 4 tons. These massive creatures probably went extinct due to the drastic climate change, lots of vegetation, and of course human hunting. But just like the other creatures on our list, scientists believe that they can potentially bring back this animal and reintroduce them into its natural habitat. But I'm thinking that the Siberian Unicorn is probably better off staying extinct. I don't think that they would be able to live in our current environmental conditions. I mean why would we want them to suffer? Haven't we already done enough damage? Saber toothed tiger makes it onto our list at number two. Now this would be so cool. These beasts had canine teeth that were 11 inches long with fine serrated fangs. But oddly enough, these scary looking teeth were actually pretty brittle and they would easily break during combat. But that doesn't make them any less scarier. The saber toothed tiger had a very specialized hunting skill. They would strategically pounce on their prey from trees and plunge their teeth into their prey's neck and then they would wait for their prey to just bleed to death. We actually have some of their fossils in our possession and scientists might be able to use use it to clone them in the future. But why would scientists want to bring this animal back to life? I mean that is one of the biggest mysteries. Topping our list at number one we have the Neanderthals. About 45,000 years ago Homo sapiens lived alongside Neanderthals who had their own society, tools, and cultural practices. They most likely went extinct due to competition for resources, climate change, disease or a combination of all those things. However, with our recent advancements with the genetic technologies, Neanderthals could possibly make a return to our civilization. Scientists are proposing that they can use gene editing tools and DNA sequences to bring them back to life. But it's also important to note that we would not be bringing back a perfect copy of a Neanderthal and I think it would be unethical to bring them back. I mean don't get me wrong, I think it's awesome that de-extinction could be something that happens in our lifetime, but we also have to 
be very careful. I mean, we all saw what happened in Jurassic Park. They were able to bring back the dinosaurs, but was that a good idea? I don't think so. <laughs>